Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm so glad you're watching. Today is gonna be like kind of a different video. I'm so sorry for the noise. Well, usually we go out for a hack or we ride, do different stuff. But today's video is all about prepping your horse to do those things. So I got a bunch of requests of people asking me how to tack up your horse. So how do you brush them? How do you put your saddle on, put your bridle in, stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna go over today. And yeah, I hope you learned something. <laughs> All right, so first off, you do have to go catch your horse. Otherwise there won't be a lot to do. But yeah, I haven't done that yet. I'll go over the brushes just like show them, give a bit of an explanation to you about what they are, what you have to do with them, how you have to use them. And then afterwards, I'll just put a little video in of me actually using the brush so that you can actually see it being demonstrated. So yeah, let's just get into it. So first group of brushes are the brushes which you use to like kind of make all the dirt loose, everything that's sticking like mud, uh, sand, just grease or loose hairs, just you want to get them all loose um, so that it's easier to brush off afterwards. Uh, there's different brushes to do that and I'll show you which ones I use. Alright, so lately I've mostly been using this one. It's kind of like a shedding brush, so you can use it just like this, just like wiping over your horse, making everything loose, or you can open it and use your both hands like this to apply a bit more pressure. Basically, it's just like a metal piece with little teeth that break apart any dirt. It's just like my favorite brush in, in shedding season. Shedding, shedding. <laughs> it's just my favorite brush in shedding season because it really does its job. Like I get so many adverts on socials for like all these different kinds of brushes to help your horse shed. But this one is actually my favorite. It's really simple and it does the job just fine. Next brush in this category is like your basic curry comb. It's the same principle as the shedding brush I just showed you. So it's got multiple pieces of iron with spikes on both sides of the brush. Usually the one side is longer and you can just pull it up and twist it. I can't do that anymore because it's all rusty. So maybe if you buy a new one, you can try it out and then you can just like twist it around and choose which side of the brush you use. But it works just fine like this. You just go over your horse and same thing, breaks apart any mud, sand, hairs, stuff like that. Then your most basic like first brush to use, I think, is this one. This is like a very basic one. It's um, just rubber, it's very bendy. I don't know, there's not much to say about it. Apart from the fact that you have to use it like while making circles, otherwise it won't do very much. I don't know, it's fine. So I wanna put on like a little disclaimer first. Me and my friend have put our horses tied up on the same ring. I'd say make sure your horses are friends as well before you do that because otherwise there might be some nasty situations. Luckily, our horses get along pretty well, so that's no problem. All right, so once you've like gotten every little piece of dirt and sand and mud and everything really loose, you can start brushing it off. There's like a whole different category and group of brushes for that. And even within that category, you can split it up. The first thing is we've got the harder brushes. They look like this. They're made out of like, it's not hairs, it's like thick plastic stuff, I don't know kind of looks like hairs though. What you do with this is you usually just brush off the hairs in big smooth strokes. That's basically it. There's not much to say about it apart from like you use this hard one first to get any part of mud that's maybe still like kind of caked into your horse. This will get that off. Comes in different formats like we've got the small one as well. 
but I usually use this one. All right, so once you've used that like kind of harder brush, you can go in with a softer one to get rid of like the small particles left. They're really good to get rid of the dust. I usually go in with this one first. It's a bit bigger. It's still like synthetic stuff. So it's not real animal hairs, but it does the job just fine. Usually these brushes have a bit longer hairs so that they can easily like swoop and just take everything with you. This one is an example of a brush with animal hairs. My friend's also getting her other brush, which is the perfect example. I love that brush so much. Thanks. So this is the brush I was talking about. This is really nice. I think this one is synthetic as well. I don't know, seems like it. But this one is so nice. Like as you can see, the hairs are super long and super twishy. I don't know how you say it. This really gets rid of all the dust. And if you've got horses like mine, you need one of these. Most of the time the dust just sits on your horse and doesn't really get off. So this does the job perfectly. Lastly, there's also like the brush with the shorter hairs. Basically that's the same thing, but personally I prefer the long ones. Once your horse's coat is like all nice, you can finish it up with like a little spray. I usually use it. It's like kind of a conditioner. It makes the coat shine and healthy. It's not mandatory though. And once you've done that, you can move on to the mane and tail. You usually use a basic brush like this. It's got a handle and just like these little plastic spikes coming through. You can basically use any brush like this, like a normal hairbrush or uh, a comb maybe. Although if I can give you two big tips actually for brushing through your horse's mane and tail, if your horse got long mane, just apply the same thing to the tail. So the thing is, you can usually buy like a detangler or something like that in pretty much every animal store. So I would do that. If I were you, just buy a simple bottle of detangler. It does wonders. And when you're brushing through your horse's tail or long mane, start from the bottom. That way you brush out the knots on the bottom first and you don't brush knots into knots and get yourself an even bigger mess. That's my pro tip for you. Hij ziet er misschien uit als een snack. And then last but not least when it comes to brushing and grooming your horse is cleaning out the hooves. You use a hoof pick for that. I've got two types right here. You've got your basic one without a brush, but I don't really like it that much. So I use this one. It's got a pick and a brush built into it, which is really nice just for, you know, getting rid of the dirt you just picked out. So what you do when cleaning out your horse's hooves is you, you'll see when you pick up your horse's hoof, I'll show you in the video, like coming next you'll see that they've got a v-shaped part in the middle that's called the frog you want to go around it like in the v-shape because that's where most of the dirt is going to be so you just want to brush it out like in the v-shape um get rid of the excess mud with the little brush but like that's not mandatory or anything last thing you want to do when cleaning out your horse's hooves is they've got this little white line that runs along the border. You also want to clean that out because sometimes little stones get stuck in there and you don't want that.
right, so next thing you want to do, which I haven't talked about yet, is saddling your horse. I'll show you everything you need to know so that you can do it yourself. So first thing we start with is a saddle pad. This basically protects your horse's back from the saddle. It prevents any rubbing. That's like its purpose. So you just want to put it onto your horse's back with these little loops up at the front side because this is where your grip will go through. So the next thing is like this kind of little back protector. It's like a little mousse and your saddle. I put them on at the same time because this is just the way they are rested on the saddle stand. It's just easiest. You don't have to put them on at the same time. So you just gently play this on your horse's back like that. And first thing you want to do then is pull up the saddle pads so that you create enough space at the withers to prevent any chafing or um, yeah, rubbing stuff like that because that's really uncomfortable for your horse. Next up, we've got like these little loops. Not every saddle has them and some have like longer ones. The longer ones you will attach to these letters, but the small ones you can just attach to the little saddle rings right here, just like so. This prevents your <laughs> saddle pad from slipping back. So that's just like a little extra safety measure. So next thing I will put on is my martingale. This is not necessary at all, but yeah, you'll see that both me and my friend have got them on. It's just like kind of a safety measure as long as your horse is behaving, it doesn't do any harm. But first of all, it holds the saddle in place. And second of all, it prevents your horse from pulling their head too much upwards. For example, right now we're going to ride out into the woods and the horses can get kind of excited for that. Well, I've had it happen multiple times that Kaju will just get too excited and just want to do his thing. So he'll pull his head up to like kind of escape the bit. And this martingale prevents him from doing that so that I still got control and that he just cannot take off with me on him. Oh, yeah, that'll be really funny. So we just pull this over his head, pull this back. So the rings that I just pulled the straps of the saddle pad through will also attach the martingale to. It's a really simple like click on system. Not every martingale is the same though. To attach the bottom part of the martingale, you just pull the girth through the loop, as simple as that. Once again, not all martingales are the same. Some have like a little clip that you can just clip onto the girth, or some girths have a little loop that you can undo and put the martingale through that. So when you want to tighten your girth, you want to do it really easily. So I tighten it on the other one, just put it on the first hole. And I will do the same thing right here, just put it on the first hole like that. Because it's like really not a nice sensation for your horse to have like something tightened around their belly. Because especially like right here, there's running a lot of nerves. So you can imagine how like unpleasant that must be. So we just pull this up one hole at a time, really gentle, and then it'll be just fine. Next up, we'll put on some leg protection. Once again, this is not necessary. It's more of like a safety measure, but especially when hacking out or when jumping, I would put these on, especially if you know your horse is kind of clumsy and can bump its legs into one another. I would definitely put these on. They basically protect like, especially the leg and the tendons right here. So what you want to do is, first of all, you want to open them, otherwise it's not going to work. And you want to start up here and kind of like slide them into place until you feel like a little click. It's not really click. You'll feel when it's right. And then you want to tighten them. Make sure it's not too tight so that your horse still gets uh, blood to its hooves. It's very important. But you want to make sure it's tight enough so that it doesn't move around or slide off or get loose or anything like that. Before putting my horse's bridle on, um, I always prep myself so that my horse doesn't have to stand here for too long with a bit in his mouth. 
because I know he wants to go once it's in. He thinks bits is in its mouth and he thinks, okay, let's go, we're ready. Yeah, that's just one thing I do. Once again, you don't have to do that. Um, I just think it's nicer for me and for my horse. Before actually putting the bridle on, I open up the reins and I put them through the loops of the martingale. Make sure the loops are uh, to the front and that once you reattach your reins that they aren't twisted because that can be really annoying. All right, what I do then is first I unclip the lead rope like that just because if I leave the halter on and it's just like hanging on the ground right there attached to the lead rope my horse could step into it get stuck cause a panic we don't want that it's just a safety thing then I unclip halter take it off there we go make sure my horse doesn't go running so what we do then is I just softly slide it over his nose ask him to put the bit in his mouth he's a good boy <laughs> he just does that see I told you like once he got the bits in his mouth he thinks okay let's go pull just his little hairs right and we can tighten this nose nose band that's the word we put the what's this I don't know you attach this <laughs> Wait a second. All right, so I've also recently put this one back on. Um, this might spark a lot of controversy because I know a lot of people don't like these, but I just put them on anyways because my horse likes to play with the bit a lot, which makes contact really unstable. So I put this on because like I said, my horse likes to play with the bit a lot. Um, and it just provides better contact because when he plays with the bit, it moves around in his mouth a lot which makes it really hard for me to properly communicate what I want. And like this, the bit stays kind of put and we can have proper. All right, so now that your horse is fully tacked up, you can go for a ride. We're gonna go for a ride. We're gonna go to the woods. If you wanna see that video, don't forget to like and subscribe and it'll be online the next week, I think. All my uploads are on Monday at 4 p.m. So if you want to see that, don't forget to check it out next week. And yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. What you doing cleaning out your... Ah.